and she says, I'm not going to say this too loud so you have to come closer. Now you're going to eat this ass. Welcome to Agents of Scream, the first and only place for movie reviews live at the cinema. But today we're here, of course, for our Insecure recap, season four, episode seven, low key tripping. I am your boy Miles, of course. And before we get started, please like, share, and subscribe. But let's get to the episode. I have my what do you call this? Neck rest? Neck cushion? I have my neck cushion ready. You know, we can't go, we can't travel as of yet, but this episode definitely made me want to travel. So at least mentally, if they're traveling, I'm traveling too. I'm on a plane. I was sitting behind them. If you look on the plane closely, in the seats behind them, I was there in the back. Just look for the Durag. That being said, the episode opens up with how the last episode ended. Molly was in the restaurant. And what we didn't see is that she actually saw Issa pull up but she pretended that she was on her phone to see if she would actually come in. Just when you thought Molly couldn't get any trash room. And she was like, here we go. Obviously we know Issa ended up going away and Molly was in her feelings about that. And that was shown that when she actually had a conversation with Andrew about the situation, she said that Issa ran away like it was an actual job. Now how petty is that? Trash Olympics again, she's she's in the lead. Molly is like the, the Jessica Ennis of, of trash because she, she has multiple ways of showing her most trash self. But before Molly and Andrew go on their vacation, Molly has to do something at work. That kind of holds her back. She's kind of late for the flight. But Andrew, again, Molly don't deserve Andrew. Andrew holds up the gate to allow her to come. She's doing all type of 360s in the airport. Managed to keep the gate open. Quick snapple fact. The lady with dreadlocks at the gate, that's actually Lawrence's mother in real life. And Lawrence, I think his name is Jay Ellis. I apologize if I get that wrong. He actually directed this episode as well. They finally make it onto the flight. Economy Plus, and sitting next to them, you have this older lady. I recognize that she was from a living single. I can't remember her name as an actress. But you know, she in this, she was funny because she played one of those people. You know, when you just want to be left alone and that you have people that are just volunteering personal information unprovoked. You might be watching out the window and they're just, yeah, I've been divorced from my husband for 25 years and this is the third day that I've, you know, had my freedom. So I'm just, hello, bro, just stop talking, fam. You know the ones where you have to just be like, yeah, because if you engage, you're gonna get another sermon again. But they're trying to get settled into the flight. They order some drinks. They're just talking. They're getting excited for the vacation. Even I was. You see, I got my my neck rest. And Molly's saying she is down for whatever on this trip. And immediately when I thought that, have you ever seen the the Chappelle show skipped? The love contract. If she's down for whatever, please sign here. If you're down for anal. Initial there if you decline anal. Unless, of course, you... No, 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 it's not going down. Pretty much standard. So I was thinking to myself, is that how Molly is going on? And then Andrew put his hand under the quilt and was giving him some of that. But she was wearing pants. How is that possible? Did she undo the zip? I think I'm going into the details too much. But if Andrew was really a bad boy, he would have taken that same finger and start stirring his drink. Give her an extra kick. You know them ones there? <laughs> So they finally make it to Mexico. They reach the hotel and Molly finally gets to meet Andrew's brother and his wife. Now, Andrew's brother is someone who likes to plan everything, have everything set planned. You have the, you're here for the weekend. On Friday, we're doing this at this time. In the evening, we're doing that, having dinner at this time. We're going for a walk at this time. On Saturday, we're doing this. When you go on holiday, how are you on holiday? I'm a bit 50-50. I like to have certain plans in place, like things that I must do. But outside of the things that I must do, I'm willing to freestyle. I don't need to plan every single detail. And the wife is very complimentary to Molly. And I must admit, throughout this episode, Molly's outfits, all her outfits, be it lingerie or jogging wear, or whatever she looked great but at the same time his wife was talking like a karen she was like molly i know you're just gonna look so fucking high in your swimsuit i'm just gonna want to kill myself why is she talking like that but in the plane i'll go back slightly in the plane as i said molly said she's down for whatever and she says to andrew i got some things to show you and andrew himself says well i got some things to show you so fast forward to now they've gone back to the room so they they're now comparing what they have for each other molly at first she's bringing out she, she's bringing out stuff and putting it on the bed. She brings out the underwear first. She brings out the bra. And me, myself, I'm thinking, okay, um, 
But what what else? And you can see Andrew's face is exactly the same. Is that your gift for me? You wearing on lingerie? No, I don't. I don't like that. But Andrew's understanding. He's like, oh yeah, I was expecting something else, but he plays it off well. And she's like, well. What do you have? And he starts bringing out toy number one, toy number two, some some beads or something. Toy number three, this is for a little vibrating thing for your ass. I was thinking, Andre! He's got more in his locker than just, you know, the standard, he's, he's trying to take it to the next level. We are, I, I said, money don't deserve Andrew. And she just come with some dege dege lingerie man but the next day they have a they have a fun activity filled day they go hiking and jogging that active way i don't know it looked like nike that was fire that molly was wearing one thing when they started jogging up the hill this is something that i noticed that no one else would care about andrew threw molly's empty coffee cup in the in the bin from about five foot away i didn't hear him say kobe but that aim was immaculate so they have as i said they have a fun filled day they went zip lining and when they make it back to their room i don't know if i'm missing anything but i don't when they make it back to their room andrew sees he has like three missed calls from nathan so he's like, oh something must be up he calls him nathan's trying to find something in the house he can't find it in the background you can hear Issa's voice. So Molly's like, oh, Andrew as well. He's looking to see what Molly's reaction to Issa's voices. And as soon as the call is over, you can see oh, Molly's rolling her eyes. She's thinking, oh yeah, oh what? It's Groundhog Day. So typical of her. But Andrew, which is something I need to rate him for, is always, he's never shy to check Molly when she needs to be checked. And Molly even said, oh, Nathan's already showed Issa what he's like and she's still trying to hang out with him. Which I thought was quite underhanded, especially as she knows that Nathan is Andrew's friend before anything else. So she could be a, a, bit, a bit more respectful. But even though I thought Andrew could have been more assertive with his defense of Nathan, he was going through a lot. Um, so he just says mental health stuff. I hope that they don't just leave it as mental health stuff and they delve more into it, even if it's just to know what was happening. Because we still don't know. Um, this is like the second season that Nathan's been in the show. But Andrew also said, listen, Issa is not on this trip. Right now she's living rent free in your head. Like whatever they're doing, that's their business. We're on vacation in Mexico. Let's just have fun. Let's forget about that. That's the whole reason why we came here. And speaking of which, I forgot. I know I forgot something. Earlier in the episode, they were talking like, yeah, what do you like what what turns you on etc come to find out that, that molly likes some type of public or voyeuristic type of interaction and that that led to them doing their business on the balcony andrew says he likes a woman who takes control so forward back to the present molly comes out with her lingerie she looks great she puts the blindfold on andrew she comes with the the tires for the arms and this shit escalated that i didn't think that they would take it to where they took it but after she ties them up and puts the blinders on them she's like now you're gonna i can't even repeat what she said <laughs> and she says i'm not gonna say this too loud so you have to come closer now you're gonna eat this ass and to me whether that's your flavor or not i don't think there's a, like a sexy way to say that it just sounds weird to me anyway but she was going in she went on top of him reversed herself was spreading her cheeks i was like raw is that how molly is going on and i think that's a that's a firm line in like a relationship this trip she met andrew's family that's a line and when you eat someone's ass i think that's a line too 100 percent. but andrew seemed like he was loving it so fair play to him so the next morning andrew molly and the wife are in the pool together someone is swimming in the pool and they're splashing <laughs> splashing in the pool and it goes into the wife's eye she has probably like mascara or, or eyelash or something in there so molly volunteers she goes to where the booth is where you can get a towel there's a white couple in front of her they get their towels no problem without getting a room key she tries to get a towel herself the attendant says i would need to see a room key and this, this whole back and forth takes place the, the attendant is not budging molly's saying hold on but you just gave it to those white people and in the midst of all this victor which i believe is the name of andrew's brother he sees what's going on comes with his room key says, oh, don't worry i got it she's good let's get the towel and let's go so when they get back to the pool we can see and andrew can see that molly is visibly vexed so he says, what's, what's wrong? And before she has a chance to answer, 
Victor, he says that the attendant was just being super intense about her job. And then Molly says, yeah, in a super racist way. And they have this back and forth. It was, it was a really good dialogue. I really enjoyed that scene. You have Molly in one sense saying that it was racist. And then you have Victor in another sense trying to downplay her experience and playing devil's advocate. For what reason? I don't know. But here we are. So Molly already feels isolated, not only because she's the only black person in this situation but she feels even more isolated when andrew and his brother start speaking in their native tongue which happens all the time not specifically with any type of race but in any scenario whether it be they speak french or spanish whatever it is if you know i don't speak that language it is disrespectful to be speaking in the language that you you know i don't understand and there's really no reason for it but as i said victor's trying to downplay her experience saying i experience racism too is how you react to it or how you let it affect you and molly's saying well you people only use that person of color card when it suits you and you can see andrew he fits under that umbrella so he's like i don't view it like that and she said not you and then victor's saying oh it looks like you're just pick and choosing when you're giving people the benefit of the doubt and she says you know what fuck you using that finger again then she used the finger again well i'm saying she used the finger again fuck you and it just it just ends there they return to their room the atmosphere is really intense they're both in bed together no one's saying a word it's 2 a.m neither of them are going to sleep molly turns to her side she wakes up the next morning and andrew is not there i was thinking wow and i apologize for doubting you bro but i was thinking wow andrew really just went about his business without her but you know the, sh the knight in shining armor comes through again he comes through allowed molly to sleep and he comes through with the smoothies and he's been really understanding with what happened he got up early had a dialogue with his brother let him know that he was wrong let her know that, that he is on her side and that whatever kind of tension there is that they can work through it as i said man hey molly don't deserve andrew and that's real talk he got the bags at the airport, got the economy plus, he's doing bits on a plane, he's got the, the sex toys, he's eating ass, he's understanding, he checks Molly when she needs to be checked. He held the gate, the airport gate open when she was late for the flight. Oh, oh my lord! But you can see that all of these events that are happening in, in Molly's life, it's starting to take a toll on her. Like, even though I don't see much wrong with how Molly reacted in the whole towel situation, you can kind of see that some of it may have been her anger redirected towards him in terms of her frustration with the situation with her and Issa. She walks on the beach alone. Again, the setting is beautiful. The sun sets the beach, the water I need, I need to travel, man. But she sits on the beach. At first I thought she was gonna call Issa because the words of Andrew saying that we need to work through this together might have still been ringing in her ears, but she calls her therapist. Thank the Lord, <laughs> thank the Lord she calls a therapist and i i applaud that because self-awareness is so important she calls a therapist and she lets her know she gets to get the voicemail but she lets her know i need to come and see you asap i've been dealing with some things and i just need to know how to maneuver i applaud that i hope that when she does go she is more receptive and more open to the therapist so she can fix whatever is broken within her but they fly back to the states they're coming out of the airport andrew's getting the bags again ah look at the scoreboard look at the scoreboard he's doing a lot and when they're getting their bags in the whole baggage claim area they see lawrence walk past and molly shouts him out they have this kind of awkward interaction she introduces him to andrew oh yeah i almost forgot quickly quick snapple fact i don't know if you guys caught this but in the airport you know you have those guys that stand with the signs here to meet mr x or Mrs. Brown or whoever, there were two guys standing there. One had the name Nora Ellis, some, so Nora Grace Ellis. The names on the two things were the real life children of cast members on the show. So Jay Ellis is Lawrence in the show. And in real life, him and his partner had a, a baby girl. So that was her name on one. So I thought that was, I thought that was really cute. I thought that was a nice touch. But they see Lawrence. And as Lawrence is exiting the airport, he's on the phone to someone. Who is he on the phone to? My money is Issa. 
before I saw the preview for the next episode. But in the preview for the next episode, you see he says he has something to tell her. What is he going to tell her? I still haven't made up my mind yet how I feel about Lawrence and Issa as a couple. However, it seems like for the last three episodes, it's going to be a dynamic of some type of love triangle. Some type of decision has to be made. A love triangle between Lawrence, Issa and Nathan. Who is your money on? And not only dealing with that, but dealing with the friendship of Molly and Issa. I, ho I really hope they don't leave us on a cliffhanger. Because this episode seems short and we only have three left. I don't know how they're going to wrap up everything with a bow without leaving us on a cliffhanger. But that has been my episode recap. Insecure Season 4, Episode 7. Thank you for joining me yet again. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And until next week, I'll see you soon.